Welcome back to Forbidden West. So we've done it guys. We have uh, gilded the lily enough. It is time for us to go ahead and do Broken Sky. Let's get in there. So uh, this is clearly a former air, air, air base. Look at that. What's that? Is that an F-22 or something? Oh, F-38, Razorwing is one of the four surviving planes used by Joint Task Force 10 during the ho Hot Zone Crisis. A sixth generation VTOL multi-role combat air uh, aircraft it was designed for air superiority, strike missions, close air support, electronic warfare, and intelligence gathering. Kindly donated to the museum by the Medina Society for Southwestern History. Hi uh, history. What am I, what am I like? History. <laughs> okay. Regala's army only grows in strength. She struck a blow to us. Regala's forces may seem strong now, but... Her machines took out my entire squad. Remember the visions. The old ones didn't choose their fight, but still, they stood firm. They didn't falter. And neither will we. Blood of the Ten. You've come to us. Yep, I have. You know who I am? Oh, the warrior with hair like wildfire who defeated Regala's champion at Baron Light. <laughs> yes, you are known to us. I am Dekka, chaplain of the Lowland clan. You've come to speak with Chief Hikaro. Not quite. There's, there's something I need here. Anything you need, the chief will provide. Come. Oh, Hakaro's here. Visions you were talking about? Yes. The records of the Ten. I can show you them, if you like. On the way to the Chief. Well, let's ask some question first. Visions. These visions. You said they're the records of the Ten. Who are they? Old ones. Who fought a heroic battle against machines on this very soil long ago. Their deeds are honored in the visions. <laughs> At least what remains of them. To be remembered and exalted. There used to be more of these visions? Many more. Once this place was filled with light and sound. But over the years, they've fallen into darkness. One by one. That is why chaplains are so important to the tribe. We remember all we can of the visions, etched in our flesh, passed down by word of mouth from generation to generation. One day the whole grove may go dark, but chaplains who come after me will keep the memories alive. Sounds like they need batteries. <laughs> uh, so let's, Hikaru wants, uh, Hikaru wants to see me? Why does Hikaru want to see me? We are at war with Regan. And you've already shown that you can stand against her. I'm not here to fight a war for you. Not for us. With us. But I won't try to persuade you. That is for the chief. He can be very convincing. What does it mean to be a chaplain here? We who outlast our youth study the visions and share their wisdom with our young. What kind of wisdom? How to be a true warrior. To fight with bravery and unflinching honor. And to know when to call for peace. You can see for yourself when we go inside. Okay, let's go. All right, let's go see Chief Akaro. He's in his throne room at the far end of the grove. Come, be welcome among the records of the Ten. Okay, look at this place. Come soldier ten. It's glitched. Incomplete. Joint force ten at Led by weapons were battle. Oh, 
The Ten were dedicated soldiers, working together as a squad and sharing in their duty. And when the time came for battle, they took to the skies and leaped to glory. All Tanakh seek to follow their example. Before the Chief, it was one of the few things the clans had in common. Interesting. What else we got? Hello? A data crop was the origin of ex Executive Order 2036-30073-H, uh, which used congressionally granted emergency powers to mandate the evacuations of most counties in the region outside of Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and Phoenix. Displaced families and individuals would be moved to temporary camps before places could be found for them in habitable areas. To enforce the order, the government threatened to nullify existing water agreements between the Northwest and Southwest, essentially turning off the taps for the so-called Tri-State Hot Zone. To its supporters, 73H was a humanitarian effort designed to preserve resources and help climate-stricken Southwestern families start new lives. To its opponents, the order was a clear bait-and-switch. The federal government had broken its deal with Medina and a greedy land grab that employed eminent domain to seize mining claims. At the same time, it replaced Southwestern refugees in fenced-in camps, which were clearly disparaged as 73 Hell, a provision that incited immediate data corrupted. Guessing something not good? Pushback? Reprisals? Staff instructions? Hi Andy, could you please inform relevant staff and maintenance hosting and security of the following new opening and closing protocols? I've already briefed Dwight and Chanet at Musec. Thank you, Micah. Opening the gallery rooms. Holographic displays should be live, should all be live 15 minutes before opening time. Inspect showcases and smudges and wipe dry cloth if necessary. Inspect outdoor areas for temporary humidity. Closing gallery rooms. Make sure the cleaning robots have finished the sanitation rounds. Double check for restocking of supplies. Sign off on cleaning, usually with Ned. Escort cleaners to staff entrance. Final rounds hand over to night security through music. Exit through staff entrance. Okay, let me watch this one quickly. During their war, the Ten climbed sheer rock, braving blinding snow and wind. They stopped at nothing to protect their own. You make them sound invincible. They weren't. But the visions tell us of their courage and strength. Something our soldiers aspire to. The Sky Clan admires this one above all the rest. They make their home in the mountains northwest of here. Well, that's something we might have to check out at some point then. What is this one? Man vs. Machine. Uh, data corrupted exhibit shows holographic representations of all set G-SYN uh, battle drone models deployed during the conflict. Uh, JTF-10 rapidly made a mockery of G-SYN's non-lethal approach. In engagement after engagement with it was surprised artillery barrage from the frigid slopes of Mount Golden north of Big Bear Lake, or a desert ambush near the solar plants near the Devanda Desert, or a jumpsuit show into the jungles of Colombia to stop an attack on a rare earth convoy. JTF-10 soldiers repeatedly proved that state-of-the-art AI and newfangled weapons were no match for human cunning and data corrupted. So what, this is some kind of, like, crack air unit, right? Ten squad... What's this one about? The Ten waged war against their enemy in the desert heat, a land too harsh for any to survive. But against all odds, they prevailed. So the Desert Clan does the same. You must have passed through their territory on the way here. I did. They uh, seem a little... extreme. They take that as a compliment. Mm. Let's see. Let's carry on. We've read that one, right?
That's the throne room. Soldiers in a jungle. Those were the ten? Yes. They knew how to use the jungle's depths to distract the enemy until the perfect moment to strike. Generations ago, my clan, the Lowland, looked to this one for inspiration as they claimed the jungle to the southwest. Not bad. So was this some kind of like paramilitary group or something? Carefully written Kadra glyphs and Fashaw's personal mark evidently part of a diary or journal. From Decker, the wise and patient chaplain of the Lowland clan, I finally learned the answer to a question that had long vexed me. Uh, before my capture, the only Tanakh I ever had converse conversation with, if only uh, if one could call it that, was a prisoner in Sunstone Rock who spoke of taking the blood and, ch and children of her enemies as her own. Her rant seemed to confirm the lurid stories about the Tanakh I had read in my youth. Yet in all my time in the Forbidden West, I have never seen such barbaric practices. I wanted to know if there was truth in the prisoner's words. There was. Those were the old ways, Danak Decker clarified, dating from the constant warfare between clans of years past. Since the ascension of Chief Hakaro, new pr such practices have been outlawed. Though not completely abolished, a few stray recalcitrants and exiles still cling to them. Intriguingly, the acts themselves were never as malicious as the Kadra portrayed them to be. Tasting the blood of a fallen foe was meant to honor their martial deeds, and orphan children were taken from conquered settlements to be raised as equal members of their new clan, which was considered to be a merciful outcome. I cannot help but see myself in this context, an orphan of sorts, taken in by a new tribe. It wasn't. It hasn't been easy, uh, and there are still those in the clan lands who would reject me. Still, the more I learn about my new people, the more I see a nobility that the Kadra have omitted from their records. Interesting. So Fashav certainly came to to see the 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 good side of the of the of these guys. You have an old world recording. This box was speaking with voices of the old ones, but now there's noise over them. Let me take a look. Where did you find this? We took it from an Asaram Delver. She was trying to steal it and other artifacts from Tanakh territory. The others were going to bury it in the sand with her. But then I heard the voices. Well, the data here is badly corrupted, but... Delta Juliet 9, you are weapons free and clear to engage the swarm. Good hunting. Copy that. We'll buy Zero Dawn the time you need. Delta Juliet 9, out. The voices of warriors from the past. And that Osiram wanted to sell them for shards. The bravery of the Ten should be remembered. I'm not sure what you mean by the Ten. These voices came from the final battle of the Old Ones. Another battle? I could learn more about it if I could find the other boxes. That Delver did say there might be more recordings to be found in the wreckage of ancient flying machines. She claimed she had a way to locate them. Yeah. The box with the voice data on it is emitting a locator signal. I could use it to find the others. If you do then, bring them back here. I will see to it that they're treated with proper respect. Whatever sacrifices were made by these ancient soldiers, we will honor them. Uh, trade in recordings? Let me know when you have one that you'll part with. Osram Delvers? Do you get many Osram Delvers in Tanakh's territory? Fewer every time we catch them, but those thieving rats would do anything for the shards. There'll always be some who'll risk coming here. And what do you do with the ones you catch? Delvers spend their lives in the dust. So we bury them in it. Alive. Jeez. Didn't, wait, didn't we see two Osram Delvers, uh, like a couple of missions ago? Who gave us a mission? Something like searching in the deep? Delve deep or something like that there? Uh, why collect these voices? Why do you want these recordings? Every battle teaches its soldiers. We should learn those lessons and honor those who fell. That is our way. That is our way. Okay, I'll be on my way. If I find more of those recordings, I'll bring them back to you. Black boxes. D 
Dana Corrupted Exhibit allows us to hear the final moments using an interface donated by Sterling Marquette. We can listen to any flight recorder that employs the industry standard air for encryption protocol version 3.5.4 or later. Simply place a black box to the interface to listen to its contents. Please maintain respectful silence as you hear the voices of the fallen. And are there others here? What did I see? Good grief, what's that? Feedback. My focus can detect beacons from those recording devices. Should help me to find any others that are still out there. Good grief. What is that? Well, anyway, is it time to go see the king? I think it might be. Oh. Watch out for the spikes. What's this? It was planted there by the chief. Ask him if you're curious. It's his tale to tell. Okay. Hall of Heroes. Welcome to the Hall of Heroes. This room is dedicated to the memories of Roberto Medina, who financed and led the campaign against the federal government and its fleet of general synthetic battle drones. Colonel Edward de Langahoya, Commander Jet, uh, the brilliant, strategist, and veteran soldier who held off numerical superior federal forces. Colonel Anne Faraday, the legendary orator who oversaw early reconciliations efforts, and all those who lost their lives during the campaign at the Battle of the Mo Mojave. Mojave? Mojave? How do you say that? The chief is inside. Are you ready to see him? I think I'm ready to see the chief. I'm ready. Good. Come. See you soon, Outlander. The savior of Meridian. I am told you held back Regalus' forces outside Baron Light. And defeated her champion, Grutta, in single combat. Impressive. I met Fashav there, too. He said you were a great warrior. And a man of honor. His death is a painful loss among many. We will not soon recover from the massacre of our marshals. But if you are here to pledge your service, that could help considerably. I am not here to fight for you. I need something in that basement. Something that will save many lives, yours included. It's not something you can see, but it is there. I have seen it. You have named your price. Now I name mine. With my marshals dead, I need your spear. Help me defeat my enemies, and I will grant you access to the chamber below. I don't have a price. I am not a hired killer. I'm here to save lives, more than you can count. I count the corpses of Marshal slain. I count hundreds more to knock them, whose lives hang in the balance. I will fight for them. I will kill anyone who threatens the peace, and you will too, if you want me to open the door to the chamber below. Okay. So by that logic, what's stopping me from killing you right now? 
and taking what I need to save everyone. You could try. You might even succeed. Either way, you must fight. My way might hold off Regala and the slaughter she craves. Fine. What do you need? I need more marshals to keep the tribe together. Such warriors can only be promoted at a trial by combat called the Cool Root. We've heard about I've this. I've sent out a call for the competition. But since Regala seeks to undermine me, she is certain to attack it. She'll want to kill me in front of the assembled clans. So what, you want me to be your bodyguard? No. To defend the Cool Root. But there is more. Knowing Regala will attack, one of the clans have balked at sending their contestants. You must go north and force Tecote, the commander of the Sky Clan, to submit and send his best. Force him to submit? Do whatever is necessary. I can't hold a cool route with two of the three clans in attendance. Marshal Katala will assist you. He was maimed at Baron Light, but he can still be of use. I sent him ahead to the northern village of Stone Crest. Meet him there, and he will guide you to the Sky Clan stronghold. If you have any questions about your mission, now is the time. I suppose just a few. Well, yeah, let's start off with Fashav. I'm sorry about Fashav. He seemed like a good man. More than a man. A bridge between Tanakh and Karja. No outlander ever earned our respect as he did. I had hoped he would be my voice in Meridian. That peace with the Karja might become something more. An alliance? An exchange. The Karja have much we lack. Our deeds are written in ink upon our bodies. Our memories die with our flesh. But the Karja never forget. Their deeds are written in book and scroll. You wanted to learn from them? As I learned from Fashav, he will be missed. Uh, old Regala? Fashav called Regala your greatest mistake. Why? That is not your concern. Really? I fought against her forces at Baron Light, and I don't even know what her problem is. She was the deadliest of my marshals. The point of my spear. So what happened? Above all, Regala despises the Karja who burned her younger brothers alive. After we turned back the red raids and tore down the battlements of Baron Light, she hoped to chase them all the way to Meridian. She could not see the cost of such a war, nor the benefits of peace after the Mad Sun King fell. When I accepted Avad's entreaties, she went mad, called me traitor, challenged me before the marshals. Damn. And her challenge? What did you do when Regala challenged you? If you were to knock, you would know that such a challenge cannot be refused. It was not easy to subdue her. I bear seven scars from that fight. The other marshals wanted me to execute her on the spot. But I found I could not sever the bond between us. Her loyalty had been as boundless as her rage, so I spared her. Rather than mercy, she took it as a humiliation, one she will never be free from. Damn, so what's her end goal? So Regala wants you dead. She does. But that will not be enough. She won't rest until all three clans fall in behind her as she marches on Meridian. Who knows? With machines under her control, perhaps she can raise it to the ground. It's been tried before. So I hear. The Cool Root? What exactly is the Cool Root? Where once the clans fought each other, now we fight as one against the machines. That is my law made manifest in the Cool Root. Each clan must send contestants whenever I call for the ritual. These contestants face trial by combat against machines in an arena just beyond these walls. 
Those who distinguish themselves become marshals who bind the tribe together as peacekeepers. Peacekeepers? You called them peacekeepers, but the marshals I met at the embassy were warriors. Warriors, yes, but more. They renounce the clan that birthed them and pledge themselves to order and peace. They enforce my law. They settle disputes and stand for Tanakh in parlay with other tribes. Without them, I cannot rule. Which is why you must ensure the next cool route takes place. Uh, what about the Sky Clan? Why won't the Sky Clan send contestants to the cool route? Of the three clans, they have the most defensible base, protected by a mighty wall called the Bulwark. Their commander believes he can wait out the war between Regala's forces and my own, safe behind his barrier. Staying strong, while you and Regala weaken each other. You think like a seasoned marshal. Good. Uh, so why me? Why send me to deal with the Sky Clan? All Tanakh respects strength, and you drove Regala back at Baron Light. That and most of your marshals are dead? Correct. What about Katalo? Can't he do it by himself? He is maimed. They will no longer respect him. That hardly seems fair. What is fair about losing an arm? Whether they respect him or not, Katalo still has worth. He knows the Sky Clan. He was raised in their base. He will guide you well. Okay, number about the chamber below? You said you saw what's in the basement? I did. On the day of my greatest victory. What do you mean? For a dozen generations, the three clans battled for control of this hallowed ground. Only I achieved it. I fought for years, killed whoever stood in my way. When I had finally slain all rivals, I stood alone in the grove. Victory was mine to savor, or so I thought. Thunder roared from the east, and a bolt of blue struck this place. That chamber. Gaia dies, and Aether arrives. All around me, the visions of the grove grew louder and brighter, and suddenly a new one appeared before me. The old one spoke. And what they said changed everything. The Old Ones? What did the Old Ones say to you in this new vision? The one called Faraday foretold the growing danger of the machines. And said we must unify to stop them. She called for marshals to enforce the peace. Then the vision faded, never to be seen again. I marked the spot where it shone with my spear. And I took Faraday's words to heart. Renounced war between the clans. Trained warriors to fight machines. Ordained marshals through the cool route. Since then, the tribe has been at peace. Until Regala attacked at Baron Light. And the chamber beneath the throne. You went in after the vision? I did. Inside is an ancient device. It hummed with power. You will see it for yourself after the cool route. This I swear. Okay. All right then. I'll go north. I'll do what you want and go north to deal with Dakota. But you'd better not forget about our deal. You will have what was promised, if you succeed. Speak to Deca on your way out. She will arm you for the road ahead. Okay, I saw something over here. What is this, Medina? Uh, defiance of the federal government, Medina declared that he would de dedicate all the profits of his mines to habitation efforts, helping as many Southwesterners as possible stay on their land. This unselfish rally cry echoed throughout the hot zone, causing other mining interests and businesses to follow suit. The federal government responded by following through on its threat to cut off water supplies, but this only galvanized the protest movement. Medina's alliance signed a multi-year agreement with the South American water cartel, Merasur, a joint effort by Data Corrupted. Dear, oh dear. Can we go up there? Doesn't look like it, no. 
let's just check her on the back of his throne. Faraday exhibit. Uh, the job went to Anne Faraday, born and raised in the hot zone, Needles, Needles, California, and a colonel in the Air Force. When De La, De La Hoya instigated the takeover of bases in the region, she had been a dissenter and so didn't fight in the war, but was instrumental in peacefully evacuating other neutral personnel. During the conflict, she became one of the nation's leading voices for a non-violent solution, which, combined with her familiarity with the region and military background, made her credible to both sides. Three months into her appointment, Faraday gave an address to Congress, ostensibly as a progress report, but actually a ringing statement of purpose. She transcended her usual plain-spoken military directness, passionately highlighting the need for community and, uni and unity in the face of an uncertain future dominated by climate change and increased automation. It came to be regarded as one of the finest moments in oratory in... Data corrupted. So, sh so Faraday's the orator then, is she? And looks like we've got one more in here. No, no, we haven't. Is that Decker? No, we got one more here. De La Hoya exhibit. Among these were Colonel Edward De La Hoya, commander of a deeply charismatic officer with family ties to Roberto Medina. De La Hoya grew up near Arizona and Nevada border and was responsible for having the task force base near Tuck Tucson. Tucson, Tucson. Several of his subordinates had families in the area, all of them apoplectic about 73H, despising it in, as an unforgivable federal overreach. The threat of being driven off their land, no matter how uninhabitable it had become, resonated with soldiers throughout the unit and beyond many of whom were from conservative states or areas affected by climate change. As the Merasur agreement took shape, Medina consulted with De La Hoya, who then took the case to his top lieutenants. Everybody agreed that the federal government was likely to send drones against the water fleet. De La Hoya, who came to prominence as a pilot, told the others that he was prepared to single-handedly take on the drone squadron in... Hmm. Okay, so these are the ten, then, that Decker was telling us about. And, like, these are all their achievements. They they did all this kind of stuff, and basically in defiance of the government. Man. Okay, so then where is Decca? That's not her, is it? No, she must be outside. And that, of course, is Hikaru. God damn, that guy's got a deep voice, hasn't he? Is that a baritone or a bass? And I bet you that uh, console that we just walked past leads us to the basement. Like when we've... Oh, did I miss something? When we've done this mission. When we've gone to the sky base. So let's do it, guys. Let's do it. I mean, we can do that, can't we? Come, let us speak. Hikaru said you have something for me? A weapon to aid your mission. You'll need it for the long road to Stonecrest. Many machines prowl along the way, and our scouts have sighted Regala's rebels in the area. Machines and rebels. Nothing I haven't faced before. Indeed. Head north towards the foothills. Ascend its slopes until your legs burn and the chill air catches in your chest. Then you'll know you're in the Sky Clan's domain. Strike true as the ten, Aloy. Very good. We shall strike true as the ten. Cleaving sharp shot bow. Tear precision bows are now available for one of your sharp shots. Okay. Deal high tear damage with the compression of blast. Use them to remove... Nice. Nice. We need this. This could be good. Let's take a look at it. So we got this adhesive blasting. This was 50. That's 26 and 70. It's ice damage. It's the current one we got, the frost one. 
and this is 50 and 60 explosives. We've already got something that explodes, so we don't need that urgently. Here's a sharp shot bow. Look at that, 265 tear damage. That could be good. Guys, that is awesome. I mean, Kuez is good, but this here... And we can edit, we can edit a coil. What coil should we put there? Crit chance, 10%. Knockdown damage, 15. Stealth damage, crit chance. Tear damage, 6%. Man, we could, we could really max up the tear damage on this. Should we do that? Alright, well, let's think about it. And let's see where we're going. So we want to be going... Damn! This is far up north, isn't it? Wow. Okay. <laughs> that is quite the way up north. Well, we've got a trick on our hands, then, guys. We have got a trick on our hands. Yeah, that's as far north as we've been. So, we'll take a quick break here, and when we get back, we are heading north, it looks like. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.